For this family member topic, we'll be exploring boundaries. We have several handouts, and perhaps you have your own favorites that you like to use. But some of the common ones that we like to review are myths about boundaries. Another one is when we give up boundaries in a relationship. And lastly, healthy boundaries and false motives that maybe keep us from setting those boundaries. Today we're going to take a look at an exercise that we can do with clients as a way to get them exploring what creating that boundary or that space might mean for them. And we do that using the grace, face, space exercise. So we can begin by exploring with the client what sorts of ways or how are we sometimes just gracious while living in the community? Things like maybe someone cuts us off in the grocery store and we just understand that maybe they didn't see us or perhaps um, they were in a hurry or maybe someone cuts us off in traffic and we just continue driving safely recognizing that again they may maybe didn't know that we were there. We often will talk with family members about the grace that they've been showing their loved one. Maybe they've been patient and kind and, and giving and, and maybe being a bit responsible for them. And we invite the family member to explore, is it time to take the next step? Are they seeing any positive changes? Or do they perhaps seeing their loved one continuing to ask for things, continuing to make high demands? So we invite family members, if perhaps it's time to move to the next level where we go to the person face to face and we let them know what our expectations are, where the boundaries are. We set those limits. Now there's many things that can happen when we do that with anyone. The person might rationalize their behavior and tell us it's not, you know, it's not a problem. Or the person might end up blaming us and saying, you know, I'm, it's not like I'm like that, it's more like you're like that. The person might minimize the problem. Oh, I don't gamble that much, or I don't drink or use that much, or I only use on the weekends. And so there's lots of different things that may come out of that face-to-face. -face. But if the person really hears us and respects those limits, they may say, you know, thanks for letting me know that. Apologize for any errors that have happened. And they might change their behaviors and so that um, it is a more healthy living environment. And then our family member can just return back to the spot of grace where they're being gracious to their loved one and they don't need to go into any further boundary setting. Or their loved one might apologize profusely, there might be tears, it will never happen again, and then it happens again, and again, and again. And that gives their, their family member an idea that if they're blaming, minimizing, rationalizing, or maybe apologizing profusely but continuing on with their behaviors, that it's time to create some space. Now often when you talk about space, family members can feel quite defensive if they're not yet ready maybe to, allow, to invite their loved one to not live with them anymore or not drop by unexpectedly. And so we try to explain to family members that space can look like lots of different things. Space might look like you go to bed 10 minutes early and you do some quiet reading for 10 minutes as a way to self-soothe. That's one way of creating space. Or maybe before you reply to somebody or you react to what they're doing, you just take a few seconds to take a few deep breaths. And that's what maybe space looks like. Maybe you go a different route home that's a little bit longer. or You stop at a park and you watch kids play on the swings or you watch the water for a little while and you just allow yourself that time to have that little bit of space for yourself. Or maybe it's something where you're saying to your loved one, we can have conversations, but I wanna have those conversations in public spaces, like at a restaurant or at chapters, where the person would feel like that would be a good way to set limits on what's being discussed and how think that conversation may go. Or we may have to have space such as asking our loved ones to move out in order to create that safe, healthy environment for our family member to live in. Or perhaps um, the situation has become so dire that the family member might have to use the ultimate level of space, which might be something like a no contact order to protect themselves. 
So there's varying degrees of boundaries and setting limits which can produce some of the space which might take off some of the pressure in the family household.